What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. You know, the HSC is one of those things where if you don't do so well in one of your earlier assessments, it can really feel like the entire HSC is gonna be a write-off. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So today I am chatting with Patrick, who, you know, in one of his earlier assessments for 3Net Maths, scored a 70%. And at the time, you know, really looking at that, was facing an uphill battle of, well, how on earth do you bounce back and turn things around? Now, by the end of year 12, Patrick achieved a 90% as his overall HSC mark, which is proof that you can certainly turn things around and your first couple of assessments um, are something that you can bounce back from. So welcome today, Patrick. Hi, Ron. Now, congratulations, first of all, in that turnaround and, and scoring the, the band six for three at maths. Um, I bet that felt pretty satisfying at the end of the year. Yeah. Now, I know you worked uh, really hard. Um, what happened, though, if we just go back to that first assessment, right, where you, know, you, you scored 70%, which I should share is not a, by no means a horrible mark for three at maths, but I know that if you know, you're wanting to do well and you're setting some you know, ambitious goals that that must have been disappointing. Yeah, indeed. Of course, it was very disappointing. Like, my goals were pretty high for the, for year 12 at least. And yeah, 70% it sort of hit me. It was like, oh, maybe I should just give up and drop. Yeah. So you were thinking about dropping from 3 and down to advanced at that point? I was considering it, but I really didn't want to. And that was because university options? You wanted to keep it because you, it was a prereq, is that right? Yeah. It was a prereq. So you had to keep it almost. And so then you're faced with, how do I turn it around? Yeah, pretty much. So I guess my first question then was, um, you know, uh, after the moment of should I drop, should I drop, you know, that sort of self-talk that, that you clearly navigated, what then did you do to try to turn things around? First of all, I think uh, my tutor of Autosma was a big help. Uh, I mean, when I got that 70%, he sort of encouraged me to like not take it too hard and keep working. I mean, consistency is key in like every course you do in the HSC, right? And so uh, at the start, it was indeed difficult that, you know, going through questions, trying to improve. But as I got a better and better and more consistent, I think the marks just naturally just started going up and started improving. And so first step was like, it sounds like James, who was, you know, your, your teacher and tutor out of smart, helped you get a bit of perspective to realize that, hey, First assessment, look, it's first assessment, but it's not worth a huge deal, right? Um, it's what worth 10, 12.5% grand scheme of things. Right. So it sounds like first step was you got perspective. Second step was you started to realize actually that the key here is consistency. Yeah. Um, so now end of the journey, as we talked about, was a 20% improvement, right? Because you got, was it 90% on the dot as your overall? 90% on the dot. So good, well done. <laughs> So 20% turnaround, so you, you got the perspective, then what did you start to do? Like, did, did you do anything with that paper and with those mistakes? Yeah, I think with the paper, like, instead of, instead of just feeling bad about it, it's more like you should face it and find the problems and try to solve them. Like, uh, get your tutor to help you, get all the help that you can get uh, for the paper. And if you find the mistakes and face it, like, you'll, get, you'll improve a lot faster than if you just leave it. So don't ignore them, right? Which I know is so easy to just want to do because it's painful and it's a reminder of where you suck, right? So it sounds like what you did was you got the paper and, and didn't ignore it. Um, so you identified the mistakes. Now, I, I'm mindful, was it just a matter of, of course, you know, you can, you know, whether or not it's a tutor or it's a teacher or a friend, get someone to help explain, right, why you got them wrong. But did you just stop there? Because does that, does that really just... Does that fix things? Just having someone explain, here's how to do it correctly. Of course not. You need to be able to like actually go through the process and redo all the questions and as well as like just like give yourself other questions to do that are like similar, I guess, so that in the future, you, like if you get this question again, you're able to do it. Awesome. So what, what I'm hearing, which is really important is you looked at the paper, you, you know, of course, get, got other people and got the support, as you said, to make sure that you understood how to do it. But that was not where you stopped, which I think is where so many students stop, right? Um, really critically, you then redid the mistakes on that paper. Um, and then you also found similar questions, right? To just, now, why were you finding similar questions? Like, what was the thinking behind that? I think, like, if you want to approach 
if the HSC, right, anything, anything can happen. You can get any question, I guess. And so the only way to like build your confidence to a certain style of question is by doing like a similar type of question to the ones you just get initially. So what you were really trying to do is make sure that you were at least trying to minimize the likelihood that you would make that mistake again in the HSC or the next assessment, whatever it may be, when the question was maybe in a slightly different form. Great, so that was immediately after that assessment. Um, now, um, you know, I know that, as you said, like you were working with James, um, you know, one of your tutors at Art of Smart to, to support you. What, what were you doing week to week as part of, because you said consistency was important. Yeah. What was the week to week sort of approach like? What, what were you doing with James in the class that was supporting that? So I feel like with, with James, since he was, a, he formerly experienced the HSC as well, right? He provided me with like a lot of tips on exam technique, as well as how to solve questions. And I think uh, his knowledge really helped me a lot, such as like, uh, say I get a question on like projectile motion, you know, he would always take me step by step. And uh, as well as that, he would give me like extension as well. So like, if there are any curveball questions, he would take me through them and leave me to solve them. Awesome, so it sounds like then the week to week approach that you had was that you were working with James, you know, um, in, in the three unit class were just systematically going through each of the topics that you were encountering and really systematically breaking down the approach, but then really critically getting exposure to the challenging questions, right? As you said, the curve balls and building the problem solving uh, sort of muscles essentially, right? To be able to know that if you got it in exam conditions, you'd find a pathway through. What did you then do at home, right? I mean, obviously that's here in, you know, in an environment that's structured to, to help you get through the material. What was your workload at home like for three and a maths? For three and a maths, it was around an hour and night of homework. So that's just for three and a, that's not including some of the advanced two unit work or is that just three and a? Three and a is like 40 minutes, two years 20, yeah. So it's about there. It's not too much, but the critical thing is you maintain that workload every single day. So you keep building. And like, I've seen some of my friends, they just like, they give up after term two or something. Yeah, and they, it just goes downhill from there. <laughs> so consistency is key. Key message. And what I'm hearing, and I think that's a great way to, for students, I think, to, to think about it. It's almost like if you're doing three units of maths, you know, it's worth 30% of your HSC really, right? I mean, 10 units are gonna count. So it sounds like you ended up having quite a, a simple but powerful way to stay on track, which was just to go an hour of maths a night. Right? I mean, a day, right? Because would you do an hour on the weekends on a Saturday and a Sunday, for example? That would depend on whether I had an exam or not. So you might do more, right? Yeah, so we're not talking about pre-exam. We're just talking about like the general week to week sort of uh, cadence that you were in. But that sounds like it was an hour, right? An hour a day, you know, 40 minutes for three minutes, 20 minutes. So you clearly were also being quite strategic in waiting your time. Do you mind me asking, how did you end up going for advanced maths? Uh, advanced maths, I got 96 as my final HSC. Well done, congratulations. So um, what's interesting in that as well, right, if we think about it from a, an advanced maths perspective is that that was on what, 20 minutes of study? Yeah, a day. pretty much, yeah. And so again, it sounds like the only way that that works in my brain, right? and I'm sure for students listening, was purely consistency. Like, I mean, because 20 minutes a day to get 96, I mean, sign me up for that, Patrick. That's pretty great. Yeah, I mean, consistency is important, but it's not the whole thing. Cool, so that's, let's talk about it a little bit more then, right? Because that's what I'm trying to get at. I feel like that laid the foundation, didn't it? Yeah. So what was the other things that you were doing? Um, and, you know, we're talking three in it, but, you know, in terms of because of the turnaround and the fact that you were able to, but certainly, you know, you did exceptionally well at advanced maths as well. What else would you then do as part of the prep for, uh, you know, two and three? So I think before anything needs to be done, like you need to build a good foundation for maths because maths is just building on top of simple things. Like it's just getting you to use the same pro or similar processes to solve more complex questions. Mm -hmm. And I think like if you don't have that good foundation, like no matter what question you get, you might, there's still the possibility that you might not do well. So how did you build your foundations then? I think personally for me, like year 11 was a very, like it was a year where I went through a lot of like 
trial and error. Like I didn't do too well in all of my maths assessments. And I think I started building my foundation during term one of year 12, where I started to realize my mistakes, uh, like realize that consistency and be, like try to fix like the problems before they would, before the HSC essentially, or like before my half yearlies, because uh, you know, getting that foundation before the half yearlies is like just so important. And so then what, what did your exam prep look like? Cause you know, I know you were saying it was an hour a day, you know, for your study generally, but of course you did highlight that pre an exam or an assessment that that, that workload would grow a little, yeah. right? So what were you doing? Yeah, I don't know, let's just call it a week, maybe two weeks before an assessment. Um, you know, for, for math, particularly, you know, three unit, but, but certainly to you as well. So I think, first of all, like the resources I got from tutoring had some, that like, especially had some challenging questions. Like I would expose myself to those. I would keep in touch with my tutor pretty frequently. Uh, on top of that, the homework, of course, I have to do the homework, but then it would include stuff like past papers, for my exam prep. And how did you handle that though? Because you were also, you know, going through a, a new syllabus, right? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. or fortunately. Um, so it meant that your access to past papers a little more challenging, right? It's not like you could just go and, and select one of the last 20 years of papers and just do it. So how did you handle that? Because it was a new syllabus, of course, like all the old past papers didn't really suit my needs anymore. So I would get resources from both my teacher and my tutor uh, to like help me with, especially like because there's papers also from university that, you know, have challenging questions. So yeah, i would use those to prep for exams. And the new syllabus also brought a number of topics down, right, from, uh, you know, first year university. So you're right, you know, there were a lot of questions that you could pull from first year or even other states syllabus and papers, right? Because they just, you know, slightly different uh, sort of syllabus have been examining some of that stuff. So it sounds like really it was a mixture of, you know, relying on, yeah, as you said, your teacher and having a great teacher at school to support and as well as the additional resources. Now, you know, were you doing timed past papers? You know, like how did you, you know, as you were sort of getting closer to that assessment or that exam, like what did that practice really look like to try to lift you know, particularly for three not right, when you know you went from 70 to 90, like, yeah, what, what did that look like? So I think at f like the first time you do a past paper for an exam, mm -hmm. it's more like you should be able, you should try to focus on getting those questions right, getting your working out on the dot, instead of trying to do it timed. And then as you get towards the exam, it's better to do it timed, maybe like 10% less time than you would usually get, just to put the pressure on yourself. So like in the exam, like if you do feel that pressure, you're still confident enough to come like solve problems and get through the test like calmly, yeah. Which is, I know part of the rule of three, I think that we talk about, right? In terms of like open and closed book. Yeah. So it's great to hear. It sounds like you definitely were utilizing that as like a, a strategy just to help build that exam technique. How did you deal, did you find time pressures were challenging for you at all in the, in the papers? Uh, it was challenging, but I think that's the point of prepping for exams. You want it to be challenging so that when you do the actual exam, like you're confident and you won't, you won't fall under the pressure of doing the exam, which I think like tutors, teachers, they all say this repeatedly, but I don't think students. Yeah. So what, what you're getting at just for clarity's sake is the 10% less strategy. Like you want to by doing it in less time in practice, I think your point is that it's harder, but then you feel more confident in the real thing. Is that, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. yeah, awesome. Given that you just navigated successfully, you know, the, the, the new syllabus for both advanced and three maths, what advice would you have to students that are sitting this new syllabus for, for maths in future years? Every time your teacher hands you homework, every time your tutor hands you homework, don't like just leave it like for like day every week try and like split it so you gradually build instead of just getting a spike and you know and i think when you gradually build it leads to a more stable performance in the whole hsc in your case you know obviously you, you were able to score two band sixes for you know advanced and extension and for extension that was you know quite a journey of growth um what advice would you give to to students that uh, you know, maybe they've got a, a band four, band three, band five, you know, they, but they're wanting to hit that band six. What would be 
like a key bit of advice you would give to them as someone that's navigated that that journey yourself? I think myself, I was at band four, band low band five ish. I think like just don't give up if you get an exam and it's not that good because the key is like the HSC counts for like 50% of your whole thing and it's not the end of the world right even if you fail in just one so just don't give up keep consistently doing those past papers doing your homework building and I think the marks should end you like it should put you somewhere pretty good. Mm -hmm.